I bought Apple's MacBook Pro M1 Max, the fully maxed out 32 core, 64 gigabyte edition, the day that it came out. And in this video, I'm gonna run through the best accessories that I found using with that MacBook to get the absolute maxed out of this beast. So let's get started. How's it going, folks? My name's Marcus, and on this channel, I discuss all things EDC, technology, and anything that helps us live productive, balanced, happier lives. The very first thing, if you only buy one thing for your MacBook Pro to get the most out of it, would be a hub. And this is the one that I've chosen. In fact, I bought two of them. This is called the Anchor 575. And the reason that I love it is because it's absolutely packed with add-on things to get the most out of your MacBook. Running through it, on the back, you'll find two USB-A data ports with a speed of five gigabits per second, two HDMI 2.0 ports capable of 4K at 60 Hertz, an ethernet port capable of one gigabit per second. There is a display port at 4K at 60 Hertz. You can connect to charge your MacBook at 85 Watts max laptop charging. On the front, you'll see a micro SD and an SD card slot, both 3.0 capable of doing 104 megabits per second. There's a 3.5 millimeter audio in and out slot, a USB-C data a port capable of 10 gigabits per second, a second USB-C port capable of 10 gigabits per second or charging at 18 watts, and an additional USB-A port capable of 5 gigabits per second. So what does that mean in real terms? It means you can have a micro SD card or an SD card in here at one time. You can be charging your laptop just through this without any other cable. You can be charging your phone at 18 watts. You can have your headphones plugged in you can be transferring data at 10 gigabits per second to your laptop and you can have you can run three different displays two of them on HDMI and one from the display port all from this single hub now this is not cheap when i bought this i paid 275 dollars for it everything in this video i i'm a small youtube channel everything on this channel in here are things that i bought myself so this is tried and tested and something that i really love in fact as i said i've actually bought a second one of these because i want to run so many things from my laptop at the moment but this has been a real power horse they do have a different version called the 577 i'll have that linked in the description below as well and it's just a little bit faster than this they didn't have it at the time that i bought this and maybe i would buy that now given that it's not that much more expensive but i can really stand over how good these anchor docks are and would recommend it for any m1 macbook pro in fact any laptop that you want to be able to turn into a power horse this can do it for you the second thing that I really like is my keyboard. I love this. It's a fully customized keyboard that I bought online a number of years ago. So this is called the Vortex Gear CNC case. It's gray. It's because it's made out of CNC aluminum on the back or aluminum as they call it here in the US. And what that means is that it doesn't deflect. When I type on it, there's no distortion, no deflection, a really solid keyboard on your desk. You really know it's there when it's there. And one of the keys popped off just as I'm saying outside of this. Maybe don't drop it on your desk like that. Look at it, what a beauty. The thing about I like about this keyboard is first of all the sound. Listen to this. So this is a keyboard, it's got red Cherry MX switches. If you don't know what that means, one of the things that I did before I bought my keyboard was I decided to try out the different MX switches. This is something that Aquax makes. I'll send a link in the description below, but it's a way for you to test all the different MX switches that are available. This is what the red one sounds like, which is what I've got on mine but you can try them all. Like MX Blue is notoriously clickable. It makes this sound. And maybe that's something you want. The Cherry MX Blues, if you're working from home in the office, you'll drive somebody crazy having switches like that every time you type. But if you're working from home, maybe that's the type of thing that you wanna have. So what I did was I bought this. As you can see, it's got one of each switch in there. You can take them out. This is what these switches look like. For a couple of dollars, decide which switch is for you before you order one of these expensive keyboards. That's something that I didn't know about. Very, very basic piece of kit. I do love the, the Apple keyboards, just to be clear. Like I've got the, I've got all of the generations of Apple keyboards. I like this because it's got touch ID if I'm logging in and out. And realistically, I'm actually a faster typer on the Apple keyboards for whatever reason. They're small and they just make life easier uh, for doing things like typing. But this keyboard, I don't know, it's a beast, I love it. And it's fully customized for me. I put on these color custom keys. I don't know, it reminds me of a Game Boy back in the 19, late 80s or early 90s, whenever Game Boys came out. There's something about this that feels really retro to me and it's the feel that I wanted to have. 
The main drawback to this is that it's wired, so you have to have a cable across your desk. If you're crazy anal like me and you don't want any cables on your desk, this might drive you crazy that you have to have a micro USB cable that runs across, but you can get nice cables, you can get uh, colored cables, you can try and make it disappear as much as possible, but the reality is you'll have cables on your desk if you're running this keyboard. The next thing that you can really increase the performance of your M1 MacBook Pro is having an external SSD card. So when I bought my MacBook Pro, I went for the beast absolute maxed out version where 32 cores uh, of for CPU and 64 gigabytes of RAM. I really wanted to have the most powerful machine that they have, but the only place where I saved and maybe I regret it a little bit was on the storage capacity. I bought the one terabyte version because I believe Apple is charging too much for premium to go up to two, three and four terabytes just for storage, for SSD storage on these devices. So that what I've done is when I'm editing videos or when I'm working on things, I'll do it on my desktop top if it's just a small project, but for bigger things I run it directly off an SSD. And for that I use these. This is the Samsung T7. It's a two terabyte version and I use it for the current version I'm working on if I feel like it's going to be too big for my desktop. So this one is capable of doing over it's 1050 megabytes per second. So twice as fast or almost twice as fast as the T5 version. So if you're running T5 right now and you're finding that it's a little bit slower, upgrading to the T7 is really will you'll notice the speed difference in that. With this, this is is I really don't know it's an external hard drive. It's, it's lightning fast. I edit my Final Cut Pro videos directly on this uh, and it's more than fast enough to do it, provided you're using a fast enough cable. So the important thing about these, and one of the things that maybe I didn't fully understand until recently is that not all USB-C cables are alike. There are different Thunderbolt types. I knew there was Thunderbolt 2, 3, and 4, but that really does have a large impact in how fast these memory cards are. So just recently, this segues onto the next part, I've upgraded all my cables to Thunderbolt 4. That's whether I'm using my dock, if I'm using my anchor dock, the cable that comes with this, I believe is Thunderbolt 3. I've upgraded to Thunderbolt 4. When I'm plugging my uh, external hard drives into my MacBook Pro, I'll plug this directly in and use one of the USB-C ports on my MacBook Pro using a Thunderbolt 4 cable to make sure that there's no resistance in this cable whatsoever and I'm getting the absolute max out of the devices I have plugged in. These Thunderbolt 4 cables are, are not cheap. For a three foot cable, this is a six foot cable. This cost me about $30. For a three foot cable, it's about $25. So not cheap given that it's just a cable, but in my opinion, if you're gonna be spending thousands of dollars on an M1 Pro MacBook, and you really wanna get the most out of it, you kind of have to upgrade the cables to go with it. Three or four of these cables and you're fully up to speed again. So I'd recommend doing that. The MacBook Pro becomes with a, an upgraded display, albeit it's got that notch in it. If you're interested in all of the capabilities of the MacBook Pro, I've done a full video on that. So uh, click here to look at that. But one of the things that I do find is that the screen, uh, I like to keep it clean all the time. It is a high glare screen. And one of the things that's really helpful is to have one of these screen cleaners. What it is is just a little, uh, little nylon brush for dusting off the screen, dusting off the keyboard. The keyboard is a dirt trap, an absolute grease crap trap on these things. And just being able to dust off any of that, uh, I find very satisfying. Um, and also uh, it comes with this side, which is safe for using on monitors. It's a little tiny, it's not a microfiber cloth, but it's a special, it's for, you can use it for um, cleaning your monitor. So uh, very, very, you can see that uh, this is well, well used. Um, it's quite dirty already. Uh, but yes, I love this. It keeps, uh, if you're a little bit anal like me and you like to keep things clean, um, this is a must have, stick it in your bag, use it at your desktop, it's, a, it's good to have. Another thing that I carry with me everywhere is this other Anchor charger. So I've had this for a long time. I've had this since my previous MacBook, but the reason I like this is because um, it's got two USB-A ports. It's got a HDMI port. It's got a ethernet port. If you're connecting your uh, ethernet on the go, it's got SD card readers and it has a power port as well. So, so this is a really good, albeit much slower than this kind of big brother Anchor dock. This is more of a portable version of that. So that even even though there's a HDMI port and there's lots of USB-C ports on the MacBooks today, this gives you additional power in terms of being able to use USB-A um, and also be able to connect your Ethernet cable directly to it for faster speeds uh, for instead of using Wi-Fi. So this is just something that's handy to have in the bag. Also, 
the ability to be able to charge your phone and charge your Apple Watch. If you've got an M1 MacBook Pro, it's likely you're probably in the Apple ecosystem. I certainly am. And just having this with me, I have this on my desk, I carry one with me in my bag as well, it means that I can keep my devices charged all the time. I can plug it directly into my MacBook or through my Anchor Hub, and it keeps everything charged, synced, and working together. It's called the Apple Duo. It's more expensive than it should be. It's Apple. I think it's about $200, uh, but I recommend them. I think they're great. One thing that you do have to make sure though is that you've got a powerful enough um, watch charger to be able to run this because it's very frustrating when you drop your phone on the pad, you drop your watch on and you didn't have it plugged into a powerful enough power source and it does nothing for you. They don't charge and they're dead when you come back. So that was a lesson I learned the hard way. Make sure you buy a power brick strong enough to power these. And the last thing that I recommend using with your MacBook Pro is getting a really good monitor. So what I've got here is an LG ultra wide monitor. It's a 34 inch model. The aspect ratio on the this is 21 by 9 so it's called uh, the ultra gear curved qhd basically its resolution is 3440 by 1440 I, it's got a really fast refresh rate of 160 hertz these monitors were an awful lot more expensive when i bought this i think they're about 800 dollars right now on amazon and depending on when you're watching this video it might be even cheaper still i really love this lg monitor it's a massive productivity tool it helps me when i'm doing my video editing that i can have my full timeline across the bottom or when i'm working during the day i use it as three separate uh, panels. Maybe on the left hand side I'll have my email, in the middle what I'm currently working on, maybe a Zoom call, and on the right I might have Slack. So I'm able to break this monitor into three separate monitors and I use different applications to be able to be really productive with this monitor. I think that the 49 inch model where I really lost it after that for a long time when it first came out, I think given my space and that it is actually too long, it's too much monitor. I think the 34 inch version is actually the sweet pot spot, it's perfect. Ooh, that's cold. Okay, that's it.